Hey, hi, hello, howdy, how you doing? I think I got them all covered there, right? <laughs> Today I got a video for the spring IOD 2023 molds. This is the molds video. Um, can't wait to share them with you. I'm Whitney with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots, and thank you for joining me today. So all of the molds you're seeing here and all my spring IOD products I get from uh, Lori at miltonsdaughter.com. Pause right there so you can take a look. There is a link and a code in my description that would give you discounts and then also more discounts for repeat customers. Now, I'm going to start out with the IOD air dry clay. You can use any clay you want. You can also use any mold you want, but these new molds for this season are gorgeous and the details in them i mean they're worth everything they have these little ridges on them now i'm showing you all three that i'm using today this first one is called hidden hollow it's got three looking uh, doors very um i want to say almost like fairy garden type feel a lot of people that were doing these lines i've already seen their videos they're calling it like a cottage type feel or what they say cottage core i don't really know exactly what that means but I'm gonna just repeat what they said too. <laughs> now, the second mold I'm gonna use is called Toadstool and it is all mushies. I call them mushies, mushrooms. Super cute. A couple of them look a little weird, like you don't probably want to touch them or you shouldn't if you come across those in real life. But uh, we'll move on to the third one, which is called Dewdrop Pond. It's got a lot of cute stuff, a lot of stuff that I have actual tattoos of, but <laughs> we've got dragonflies, hummingbirds, frogs, lizards, snails, turtles. I'm gonna use the little fern and, and the ladybug there. And um, we're just gonna jump into the first DIY. So now this was a sign that I got at Hobby Lobby. You can kind of see it had some printing on it, but I'd taken it off and I never used it for the project I'd planned on it. So here I'm gonna show you my tag apparently I paid $5.99 for it but what we're going to do is we're going to turn it into a vertical piece it was originally a horizontal piece that I got so I'm taking this this frame piece off the back I was going to try to save it guys there's just no way to save it the way it was put on there you just couldn't so also take the hanger off because we're going to put that back on at the top we're going to forget and then I'll show you I end up putting it back on and I'm just cleaning everything up so I'm going to take my sander and I'm going to clean up the holes after I've uh, pulled them out with a little bit of a sander and then I uh, take the stickers off. So now the first one here, I'm going to use the hidden hollow. So I'm going to make this into a, just a cute little fairy door, cute little looking thing. It's just, it's a vertical piece. It looked great. I, I went to my stash and found something I thought would look great. So with all these molds, I'm going to use cornstarch in there. You can use flour or cornstarch just to make sure that the clay you're using or whatever medium you're using will release. I haven't also on top of that, I've a couple of these I ended up using like the mushroom one. I didn't use cornstarch a second or third time and I didn't have a problem with the IOD clay releasing. Now there is a clay you can get off of Amazon. I've seen people use, it's like DAS clay. I've never used it. I haven't used paper clay. This is the only clay I have and the only clay I've used. I've had no problems with it. I like it, but you can use anything else. And then also I've seen some other people use resin and these are good for resin, but do you see how easy this pulls off? I'm just using the side of my finger and they have all these ridges around the edge and it makes it just super clean and neat to pull them out. And then it just peels right out of the mold. None of these I had any problems with and I, I used a lot. So the way I recorded this video was I'm going to put this one on with Starbond. Just let me stop real quick. I'm going to use my Starbond medium adhesive, but no accelerator. And I'm just going to put this glue on here, spread it out with a piece of like scrap wood stick because I'm, I'm adhering this clay to um, metal. It's some sort of galvanized metal back there. And I didn't know if it would stick. So I obviously don't want to use wood glue. And I let that sit and cure. Now I did glue it down while it's wet. The IOD clay, you can do a lot of stuff while it hasn't dried. And I, every single one of these I glued down when it wasn't dry. So now I'm moving on to the second one. I'm going to show you, I'm making all of my molds. I'm going to do them all in order. And then I glue them on and I had to let them wait overnight to dry. Then I came back the next day and I finished the project. So you're going to see me do each project I plan on starting. We're going to watch me basically as I'm doing right now, put the clay in, push it around. You'll see it's very easy just to take the side of your thumb and drag it across the mold and you'll feel a natural ridge in the mold. And it really just makes it so easy just to pull that out and then you know this little ladybug was a little bit close to the fern I should have did the fern first and then calm down <laughs> and then did the ladybugs but I was excited it was cute and fun and it was all right it's very messy I'm not a messy person so when I have mess all over the place you, you'll see me constantly trying to like like clean off my desktop or something I don't know why I do that in the craft room sometimes but um, it's a little messy I might try some resin pretty soon to see if that's a little bit neater because you know the resin will just you know they have quick look out look at the detail look at the detail on that ladybug it's so cute i have a tattoo of a ladybug i have lots of tattoos you guys know that you can see them in my videos but i got i got a ladybug tattoo on my foot it's so cute now this right here is a, a, a tin that my husband recently went to switzerland and he brought me back some chocolates and they were gone in like 10 minutes because they were delicious 
But um, this is a cute little tin. I decided to keep it. I literally, he literally just did that in February. And so I said, this is the perfect example. I'm going to use this tin and turn it into like a little tabletop piece. And I love it. So I decided to put the fern and a couple ladybugs on the top of the lid of this tin. And we're just, again, we're using Starbond because I'm adhering it to probably aluminum or some sort of metal. I'm not sure what the tin is made out of. Probably not tin, <laughs> but... I really liked it, so I used my Starbun adhesive again. And Starbun, it will obviously adhere without your accelerator. You don't have to use the accelerator. It just takes like maybe a minute, maybe at the most. Uh, but again, I put it down while my clay was still uh, fresh out of the mold. So it was still wet, you could say. It had not cured at all. And now for the third one, I'm going to use this flower pot with all transparency. I went into my backyard and I picked that up from outside. So that thing has been in my garden or lack thereof for probably many years. But anyways, I'm going to basically put all these mushies all over the outside of this pot. And this is the one that I wasn't too sure about. Now, I am only gonna show you me doing like maybe two or three, but look again, look at the detail that you get on these molds, I love it. So what I've done is, I'm just showing you me doing a couple of the mushrooms and then pulling them out. But I ended up, I'll show you how many I do. I, I do the little weird looking ones too. They're little squishy ones that look like they have like like they've been like abused on the top of the mushroom. Like the ones you don't think, I would not touch those in real life because I've seen movies and, and, and I've heard things where, you know, you don't want to touch certain things. Like some of them, like, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> I put all of them almost, except for the very large one on this little flower pot. And it turned out just awesome. This one was one of the ones I wasn't sure about. And it ends up being my favorite. Wait till you guys see at the very end. I love it and it's so cute and I, I want to tell you about it but I can't because we're going to do two projects before this but I want to tell you so bad so bad <laughs> so this is the biggest one I'm putting on here this is the the I guess that's the second largest for it and what I'm doing is I'm not going to put the full thing on so I didn't put my clay going all the way down to the bottom so I'm going to show you here I'm going to use wood glue on this because it is also um, I know it's called thick and stick but I don't have that but it is still a tight bond brand and what I'm doing is I'm taking my spackle knife and I'm cutting the stem off so it just hits the the bottom of the flower pot and I'm going to line up the rest of all my little mushies with the bottom of the flower pot so it looks like they're kind of sitting on the ground with your flower pot or they're kind of growing if you have the flower pot on the ground and the natural earth that's grown around it the the, the the mushrooms have grown in front and yeah anyways again insert soap opera story here for said project that's how I do it I make stories up in my head while I'm crafting it's yeah it's entertaining to say the least <laughs> to say the least. Maybe one of these days I'll leave the actual audio in because you guys, I do actually jibber jabber to myself sometimes, but here's the end result. Everything's been glued on. Now, all of this is still wet. It's not cured, but this is all of the mushrooms that I put on. And you'll see right there. Those are the ones I'm kind of sketchy. Don't touch those. I don't know what they are, but <laughs> here's the next day. Also, I got my nails done. So now you are going to see different nails. So everything's fine, guys. It's just been one day. <laughs> and everything's dry. So now all the clay is dry. It's turned bright white. You can see that it's dry. I've made sure everything's been patted down. If there's some of the pieces have cracked and that's a natural thing to happen. The IOD sisters have a lot of instructions on their website also that'll tell you it is a normal thing for the air dry clay to have cracks in it. And a lot of times you see the cracks in the door actually lend towards the distressed and vintage look that mostly, mostly what we're looking for anyways. Now, for the first one we're gonna go, this is the first project, we're gonna use the door. So I'm also gonna use this 2023 transfer book called Millet's Pages, also IOD's 2023 spring line, and I'm gonna pull out my flowers and butterflies. I had used in my previous video, but this time we're just gonna start cutting some things out. So, lots of fussy cutting, lots of little, you know, here and there, get these things out. I took some flowers and I kind of got one little, I got, you, I'm gonna have you watch me take this one out, but then I got another little one off to the side here and I kind of just cut it to make it fit around the door. I just literally had no rhyme or reason. I just decided to take things and make them my own. And for some reason, I was like, wanted you to watch me fight with that little piece that was on my desk. So with rub on transfers, if you're not familiar, you're going to take the transfer backer off and it's kind of sticky and you're going to place it down. Once you put enough pressure, you'll peel off the, the plastic piece on top, and then you're going to rub that over top of your transfer to burnish it. It's called burnishing. And that just makes sure that everything is basically sealed down. If things start sticking to that plastic piece, you can, I'm using a stylus right here just to make sure anything that pops up, you can just lay it right back down, put some pressure on it. It comes off. 
the IOD rub-on transfers, I think are the best quality transfer I've used. I've used many, many transfers, many brands from many places. I love these transfers. And then here, I didn't have you see, but I added a, just one of the little butterflies from the same pack. And I love the orange and the, and the colors together. So now I'm going to distress it. So we're going to get our Waverly antique wax out and we are going to just take a small bath and then wipe most of it off and then bathe it again, wipe most of it off. So this is going to be a long, not a long process, but of course I sped it up eight times, but you guys, it took me a minute. I'm going to cover the door first and I want to make sure I get every little groove saturated with my antique wax. Now I'm using a paper towel and not a baby wipe just yet because I just want to wipe it off. I don't want to actually take more product off yet. I want it to get in it. Now you see me use the baby wipe because I want to lighten up the highest pieces or the raised parts. Once you're happy with that door, then I'm going to do the back of it. I like when some of the, the paneling, like the wood pieces in the back next to that little knocker there, in the middle, I like the way it looks. So now I'm taking my chippy brush and I'm kind of doing almost like a stenciling effect where I'm stippling around on the middle. Now the wax stays a little bit tacky for a while, but once it dries, it does not come off of the galvanized metal. I've distressed with the antique wax on metal many times and, it, and once it dries, it doesn't come off. Then I took the excess and I basically just kind of dry brushed it around the frame, gave it a little bit of texture. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of a, a Spanish moss here at the bottom. I'm going to turn this into kind of like a little, almost like a 3D, well it is, a 3D collage. It's going to look like a cute little garden door with some, you know, botanicals and now some ribbon. So I've got some green burlap ribbon and then I got this mesh ribbon at Dollar Tree last year. I've got extra pieces I cut off the edge of a burlap, a piece of burlap and then an extra piece of cheesecloth from my last project, on uh, my last video. I'm going to take a, a combination of these. Now this green one is just going to be a strip that we're going to staple to the frame in the back. So it's just there for a little bit of color. So that one, I'm just dovetailing the ends. And now the Dollar Tree ribbon here, I'm going to just make a loop out of it because I'm gonna make a classic bow shape. And then I'm gonna glue the middle of it just, just to tack it together so it doesn't come undone. And I want it to kind of hold its shape while I'm still making the rest of the bow. Now I'm doing the same thing here with the cheesecloth. I thought I would leave some tails on it, but the tails kind of hung down in front of our door and I didn't like it. You know, I, I didn't want too much covering the door. It's, I mean, you spend all this time to make all this great stuff. Why would you want to cover up everything? Now some things, you know, for, for texture or for layers, sure. But I decided just to do another little uh, loop of the cheesecloth. And then I added the extra pieces of that, the pieces of burlap edging I pulled off. I wrapped the whole middle with some twine from Dollar Tree and now we're ready to put it together. So I'm taking my staple gun and I am putting a, a crease or, or, or a little a little fold in the middle here and I'm stapling it to the frame. And then with my hot glue, I'm taking our bow and I'm attaching it to the top. Felt it needed something. So I went to my junk bucket and I got my little Pitberry garland out that I, I don't know why I keep it in my junk bucket. It doesn't really have a home anywhere. But if I lose it, I know it's in my junk bucket. So it makes no sense when I say it out loud. But in my craft room, it makes sense to me. Do, just, do you do that? Do you have things that like literally, oh, that's, oh, that, that's where I keep that because it makes no sense, you know? <laughs> so I added a little sprig. I kind of made it look like a little vine. I glued it down into the Spanish moss and then down at the bottom against the door. And then I added two little pieces that I kind of just twisted around my finger on either side of the bow. And now I'm making these cute little, just, I'm taking a little bit of Spanish moss and kind of rolling it in my palm of my hand just to make a cute little like pom-pom or a ball out of it. And I'm going to tuck that on either side of the bow just to cover up anything that might be popping out so it doesn't show that I just stuck some Pitberry Garland in there. But it all comes together. It looks like a cute little gardeny, you know, little garden doors theme. I just, I love it. And also, <laughs> don't forget to put your hanger on the back. I literally forgot I would have done it before I added the bow or and the Spanish moss. I should have put it on there, but here I'm showing you. I did put it on after the fact and it's hanging the right way. Trust me, you can put the teeth on backwards. I've done it. <laughs> but here she is, here's the end product. What do you think? I love how it turned out. I I had a plan. I saw a rectangle, I saw a door, I put them together, but I didn't realize that it would turn out so great. I love the combination with the rub-on transfers and the mold. And again, that wax that's on the, the galvanized portion of this sign, it will dry and then it won't come off. But you can seal things if you choose to. I don't because I don't, this isn't going to be somewhere in my home. I know how to take care of the things that I make. If you're going to sell something or give it as a gift, you might want to put a sealer on it, but tell me what you guys think. I think she's beautiful. I love how it turned out. And I love that little orange butterfly. It's so pretty. <laughs> so pretty.
Now, our second girl here, this is my little, my little chocolate tin that I, I got from Switzerland. This is gonna be a little special because it's gonna stay on my countertop. Now, I'm gonna paint it my most favoriteest color, Spanish moss. I love this green color to the point that I forever forgot to buy a big old jug of it because I had a little sample jug. Uh, from folk art came in a like a six pack and I'm like I need to buy it I love this green color it looks great in spring summer it looks good with sunflowers it looks good in fall with pumpkins this is a universal color in my opinion I love this green so again Spanish moss it's in my Amazon shop if you want to take a look at it if you want to buy the same one it's there's a link in the description and pinned my first comment I just put one coat of paint on this all over now there's some places where yes, you can see a little bit of the gold coming through, a little bit of the blue coming through. We don't need to do a 100% solid saturation. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take some mineral chalk paint, Waverly. I already had this out because I'm gonna show you sneak peek. I painted this first, that's our little pot that you're gonna see next. And I'm just using my leftover Waverly um, mineral color on the top of my tin. I thought I was only gonna highlight my leaves and the ladybugs, but I decided to get a little ham and uh, you know, I'm extra. And I kind of just started bust the whole thing. And it wasn't bright enough for me. So I went and got my white chalk paint. This is Adder, no, it's, not, it's called Cottage White, I believe, by Full Card also. And then I did the same thing, but I focused more on the fern. I think that's a fern. I focused more on the fern. And now we're taking the same paper towel from our first project, and I'm using that with the antique wax, and I'm putting it in some of, I'm not putting it all over. You'll see here that there is a, there's a method to my madness. I had an idea. I wanted it to look more like rust, even though it's just a kind of a brown. I didn't, I didn't want to go get any, uh, you know, cinnamon or anything, although that would look really good, honestly, like a little powdery looking, like fuzzy, velvety looking moss or rust on there. It would look great. Uh, so I just concentrated a lot of that antique wax to a bottom right and the top left and a little bit on a leaf here, there. And this is what I, I decided to end on. I like the fact that it's kind of just all over the place. It looks like it's been sitting out and that's exactly what I was going for. Now this one, excuse me, <clears throat> this one's a little bit more simple. Everything's dry, it looks great. All I'm gonna do is take a little bit of twine from Dollar Tree. This is the Dollar Tree jute twine and I just wrapped it around going different directions. At first I put the bow on the front but I didn't like the bow there, but I did still want to have that jute twine on the front. So I just decided to take it, flip it over and then tie the knot on the back of it. This piece is either going to stand up or kind of lean against uh, the wall or the back of a tear tray, or it's gonna lay flat on a coffee table or a tabletop. It's a conversation piece. For me, this is a chocolate tin that my husband brought me back from Switzerland and I wanted it to have new life. Or you can always take off the jute twine, put like four little knobby feet on the bottom of it and then actually physically use the tin itself. Again, seal something Mod Podge or, or something other, you know, some sort of sealer so the paint doesn't come off. But in my opinion, this is going to be like a little tabletop conversation piece. It's it's a knickknack. It's now become part of my home. Tell me what you guys think. Also, tell me what you would do. Now, our last project, the bushies turned out great. Everything's dry. Here's where you see the before of the Waverly mineral paint that I used on the last project. So I just kind of poured it out and I covered the whole flower pot in the mineral paint. Now, mineral is kind of like a grayish brown. It's not really either side of, of either one. It, it, it kind of leans both ways, but I just painted the whole pot over and over the bottom. All of the mushrooms, you got in, I got into all the crevices I could, made sure I did the top and just about maybe an inch inside the top of the flower pot, just in case you see it. Now, once it's dry, we are going to do the same thing that we did with pretty much our first project, the door, the little garden door, and we're gonna take our antique Waverly wax and the chippy brush, and you'll see I'm still using that same paper towel because at this point the paper towel is saturated and it's a really good uh, smudger or smear. It's, it's already got a lot of wax on it, so it's good to just use as a, a you know a blotting tool or a, a stippling tool, almost like you would stencil something. But I liked as I'm saturating all around the pieces, all, over, all around our little molds and our, our little mushrooms here, it's getting into all the grooves and crevices. And then when you wipe it off, it's staying in the creases and it, that's where you're getting more of the aged look that I love. Now it is changing the color of the pot to just brown, but remember that bottom layer has to be a certain color for it to have this look. I wanted more of it to show. So at some point here, you'll see, I grab a baby wipe and I start to what they call wet distress. So I'm taking off maybe the top layer, the first layer of 
the wax, but not too much. And then I go back and forth between dabbing with my paper towel that's already saturated in the wax I've been using. And then I take the baby wipe and I kind of just make some, some clean, I'll say clean spots. You ever do that? Be like, oh, make sure you don't make a clean spot in my dust because then I'll actually have to clean all of it. But in this instance, I'm purposely making a clean spot because I want it to make it look aged. So as we'll say, like my front room, oh, what is it? It's aged, we'll call it distressed. But don't make a clean spot because then I actually have to dust the whole thing. <laughs> so here's the end result. I love how this pot turned out. So now I got my little box here of uh, leftover pieces of styrofoam. So like I have a junk bucket, I got a junk styrofoam box. It's the same thing. So I'm just kind of getting things put together in here, finding some pieces. I'm kind of Frankensteining them, cutting them, and making other pieces whole. This little piece I kind of sandwiched together made into one little circle. And then I'm using some extra floral stems that I saved from old uh, pick, you know, flowers that I've used. And I'm, I'm using them as stakes, putting them in there and cutting them off the top to kind of make sure on top of the glue that they, you know, star from stays in there. Now I'm putting a little layer of Spanish moss on the top. So that, that covers that as we put our flowers in. And so far, this is what we have. Also still looking amazing. I love this one. This turned out so much better. <sighs> words, words, Whitney. This one turned out so much better beautiful -er, prettier than I thought it would. So here I'm gonna show you, these are what I use. So I've got um, some greenery from Dollar Tree. This is greenery from Mainstays is a boxwood pick from Walmart. Then this is uh, more Dollar Tree stuff. Now this was during fall last year. They're called flocking balls or I'll call them blocking falls because that's just too close for YouTube to be like, well, is she using bad words? But no, you talk to Dollar Tree, not me. And now the spike here, I got that this year. That's a, that's a spring flower. So. Go to your stash and just grab some stuff. What I did was I made sure that I grabbed two different kinds of greens. I like mixing greenery, even if it's not in season or if it doesn't look right. Like I would even put pieces of pine in there from Christmas, you know, because again, pine trees are not just growing in December. I have, my mother has pine trees at her yard year round. I grew up with pine trees. It's just what it is. But take some greenery, boxwoods, different things, different florals, and just put them together, whatever makes your heart happy. Now with these ones here, I'm just showing you if I could get my fingers, you know, to the camera. These all, I had to take my, my uh, needle nose pliers and kind of curl the tip down so that these pieces didn't just pull off the top. That is a pet peeve of mine with most of the Dollar Tree stuff. It doesn't have a stopper on the end of it. So I literally have to cut them all off and then take my my wire, uh, my needle nose pliers and curl them all down because there's nothing I hate more than when pieces are just flying off of a, a project. Now I hot glued all the greenery in. Uh, the only thing I didn't hot glue will be the little orange guys there, but the little uh, flocked uh, balls with the greenery, those are getting glued in. And my best part here, here, here I'm showing you, I just cut everything up and got it ready to go. Do you guys remember these from last fall? <sighs> these little styrofoam mushies were so cute. I may have purchased way too many of them for any sane person to be able to adequately make an excuse for buying, but we won't talk about that. I'm just happy that I have them. I'm using two of them and I'm not even noticing one of them right there has a little Literally, uh, it's got a boo-boo on it, but I'm going to cover it in the most ex beautiful, extraordinary way, in the most delightful way. We'll do some Mary Poppins. I cover that little mess up in the most delightful way. I will show you. So here, this is the best part. Now, these ones I am not gluing in because there may be a chance that, excuse me, at some point I want to change the color. Who knows? But I am going, I am gluing the, the flock. Actually, I'm not gluing those in. There. Yeah, I am. Okay, so I didn't glue two of them. Now, see, I'm catching myself. I'm, Whitney, what, what are you doing? So now I have to have a talk to myself. Whitney, you only glued like four of them in. I think I missed a couple. I didn't glue the orange ones in, I glued the rest in, but look how cute it is. And it doesn't even have ribbon, it doesn't need ribbon, but I can take those little orange flowers out and maybe put in some small sunflowers later on in summer, fall. I can put some small pumpkins. Of course, anything has looks great with pumpkins, but see the little ouchie that this little mushy has? Just noticed it. And so last year I did a bee themed video and I'm going to use these ladybugs, but I purchased this pack from Amazon. It's 120 pieces. So it's like 60 each of the butterfly, uh, not butterflies, of the bumblebees and the ladybugs. So I'm taking here, it, it has a little, um, it's a little wooden and it's not hand painted, but it, the paint is great. It doesn't, it's not like all crooked or anything. It doesn't scream made in China, even though it is made in China. If you guys know what I mean, do you know what it means when it just screams made in China? <laughs> Sorry if that's, I shouldn't have said that. But anyways, um, I'm taking the, the little puffy uh, double stick adhesive off the back of it. And look how cute. It's just a perfectly flat little ladybug. 
And now you're going to watch me fumble here. I don't know why I didn't cut this out, but oh, maybe I left it in so I could joke about it. Who knows? <laughs> we won't talk about that. So you're going to watch me struggle with my pliers here thinking, Whitney, just grab the end of it and put some glue on it. And then there you go. There you go, sister. You can do it. So I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue on the back of our ladybug. And then I'm going to put that over the little ouchie on the mushy and it won't, you can't see it at all. And I remembered that was that little bag of uh, ladybugs and bumblebees was in the bottom of one of my buckets in my closet. But I remembered I had it and I went elbow deep in that thing just to, to make sure I could get it. But look how perfect it is. I love that. <laughs> it makes me so happy. I think I like the whole project because of the dang uh, ladybug, but I love the way the molds with the detail on the mushrooms. The focal point is our flower pot. The molds are from our flower pot. The the aging, the antiquing, the wax on it. It the flower pot itself is supposed to be our conversation piece. I love how she turned out. I couldn't be happier. And I I stared at this thing. Also, I stuck it on one of the Dollar Tree candlesticks. Now it's not attached. I just did that so I could turn it here in real time in my um, studio lights. So you guys could see all around the flower pot and see all the little mushrooms. And look at even that little crack there on that mushroom in the top right there. It looks like it was meant to be that way. It looks like stone, like it was aged and just weathered. And I love how it turned out. Uh, one of my happy accidents or one of those just happy results. Especially when you don't really have a plan. I'm like, okay, I'm going to take this, put this here. Let's see what happens. <laughs> and I love it. And that greenery does pop like that. So that's it for today, guys. Those are my three projects I made from the three molds that I got. Again, I got all of my IOD products from Lori at Miltonsdaughter.com. Take a look at the description. It's uh, or at my description because the link to her website is there. Um, now, this door also reminds me of like from the labyrinth do you remember the door that's like you must pick a door one of us always tells the truth and one of us always lies i love this it reminds me of my childhood i watched labyrinth re religiously for for many years i had a i had a lot going i mean i love that that movie my sister too so that door is like taking me back to to movies and shows i used to watch back in the 80s um let me know if you if anybody remembers you type in the comments below that you know you, you were there for Labyrinth as well. Originally when it came out. <laughs> but I love how they turned out. I couldn't be happier. It's just, it just turned into a happy little, happy little crafting day. More than it was a couple days. Now I have a coffee page. So I want to thank everybody who has supported me and, and donated anything. If you like anything I've done or you find my videos informative, consider supporting me and buy me a coffee. The link is in my description and in my pinned comment below. Now, with that said, I want to thank everyone. I love you guys more than I can possibly say in words. And I'm not just repeating that for fun. <laughs> it is the truth. So many hugs, happy crafting, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye for now.